Was on, ladies and gentlemen. My name's Ross. I like games. And today, we've got some blue Digimon cards to talk about. We've got a couple of Digimon and we've got a couple of option cards. So I figured let's whack them in a video and let's get rolling. Although, shout out to Blue, right? Because Blue didn't get that many Digimon. It only got 12 Digimon in the set. And three of them are vanilla. That's like one in four Digimon in the color being vanilla. I mean, if you compare that to yellow that got one vanilla card and red that got two vanilla cards, it seems a little bit rude, quite frankly, ladies and gentlemen. It seems a little bit rude. Now, shout out to DigimonCard.dev for the, well, how making it nice and easy and the translation group over on, I believe, the Discord for turning these cards into English. Uh, we don't actually need translations, however, for the first couple, because we've got vanilla cards. Starting off with Betamon, a level 3, 3 cost to play normally, 1 cost to evolve, 5,000 power. And the thing is, 5,000 power is huge. Like, for a level 3, 5,000 power is ridiculous. Now, it, it's not unheard of. The Voromon that came around in red in this set does have 5,000 power. But then again, Voromon is a 4 cost to play normally. Although, it is actually worth pointing out that that also is free to evolve, whereas Betamon isn't. So, we're, we're essentially just kind of running around the same kind of things here. But my point is... We've got a very powerful Digimon, and it's not even expensive. Now, the one cost to evolve is expensive, and I've said this before, but, but the reason it's so bad is because on your first turn, you start with, if you go first, you start with no memory. So the first cost that you pay puts it to your opponent. And generally speaking, level 3s are free to evolve, so you can evolve a 2 into a 3 without ending your turn. But if you evolve into this, you do end your turn. So don't evolve into it. Play it normally. They're done. Sorted. Let's just hope you've got a level 3 you can evolve into. I mean, to be fair, 5,000 power is very high. But I always worry, like, is it going to matter? Like, how often is that 5,000 power really going to keep you alive? Because if it's not going to keep you alive, does it really... I mean, okay, I suppose you can take out a resting three or 4,000 power Digimon. It is nice. But if I'm honest with you, would you, most of the time, would you rather have the power? Or would you rather play a Gabumon and draw a card? Same cost. And okay, you have 1,000 power rather than 5, but most of the time, 5,000 power is too low to get much of anything done anyway. And if we're not impressed by 5,000 power, how about Seijamon? Can we be impressed with 4,000 power on a level 4? No. I mean, look, I'll give you this. It's not any cheaper to evolve, but it is cheap to play normally. Free is what we would expect to pay to play a level 3. A free cost to play a level 4 is cheap. And what this really does, this gets you up to your fives and sixes more easily. This is your way of going, well, okay, I could play a, a Gabumon and draw a card. Or I could play a Seedramon and have already a level four out. Getting myself that much closer to getting my fives and sixes. And I do think that's the reason. Seedramon, I do like Seedramon. And the reason I like Seedramon is speed. This gets me where I need to go faster this gets me up to my fives and six and i know th th the two to evolve is not good but to put it bluntly if you're evolving this card something is going wrong this is not a card we evolve into this is a card we play from our hand and paying free cost to get a level four on the field that you can then i mean you know we we've seen cards that evolve more cheaply so play those and you can get yourself up to a level 6 actually very quickly at this stage. Back in New Evolution, we saw my boy Monzimon, who is a 2 cost to evolve into a level 5. And all of a sudden, we've paid 5 memory. And we've got a level 5 on the field. That is, um... Yeah, that ain't bad, ladies and gentlemen. That ain't bad at all. But that is the only reason to play the card. So let's... Let's move on now, shall we? And let's have a chat about a couple of option cards, because that is now all of the blue Digimon chatted about. 
And let's start off with Arctic Blizzard, a two-cost option card, and when you play it, you choose one of your opponent's evolution sources and discard it, and you give one of your Digimon an extra 2,000 power until the end of the turn. This is a weird kind of hybrid card. Like, these are two very different effects that, that have just been mashed together into one card. I have no real problem with this. I kind of like it. It's a fun card. But it does strike me as odd that these two very different things have been mashed together. I mean, removing evolution sources, that is something that has always been the case like that is something that blue have been doing i mean right back in the starter decks we had the gabumon and garurumon who removed evolution sources when you attacked with digimon that had evolved from them and then we had things like the tamer that gave you an extra memory if at the beginning of your turn you had an opponent that had any Digimon with no evolution sources. We've seen option cards in the past. Now, it's a fairly extreme example, I grant you. But over in New Evolution, we saw Nail Crusher that got rid of all evolution sources on all of your opponent's Digimon. Clearly better than removing one evolution source. And similarly, we saw Emerald Blaze that for one cost gave one of your Digimon an extra 3,000 power. So my point here is that if you're just removing evolution sources, we can do better. Though admittedly, we can't do better for two cost. If you're trying to beef up your Digimon, we literally can do better by having a bigger power boost on a cheaper card. But if you want to do both, I like this. I, I just, I'm very apprehensive. Because the problem is, if my opponent's got two Digimon, and each of which has four evolution sources, realistically removing one isn't going to be amazing. Now, that's not to say it's terrible. You know, I mean, Pumpkin Mon's one that I've looked at in a couple of videos in the past day or two. And it's got a really nice inheritable skill that when it's destroyed, you draw two and discard a card from your hand. So if your opponent has no cards in their hand, and they are desperate to draw something, and you can remove Pumpkin Mon so they don't get a choice to draw anything then yes, clearly that can hurt them. Being able to take away their draw power when they're really struggling is obviously going to be a very nice thing to do. Nice for you, super annoying for your opponent. But it's not always going to do enough. What if your opponent's got multiple evolution sources and they're all vanilla because they're doing that thing where they're trying to evolve up as fast as possible? You're not getting rid of any evolution sources and you're not getting any of your powers rolling this can be awesome you know think about the war Greymon from the starter decks that gains security attack plus one for every two evolution sources getting rid of an evolution source will get rid of a security attack there are great things this is going to do and i love that you get to do both the things at once but i do worry it doesn't do either of them quite as well as we might like oh and as a security skill it puts it into your hand not loving that really either. I mean, it's nice to be able to have it in the future, but we've seen much better security skills. Like on the Ray of Victory. A five cost option card, but you return one of your level five or less Digimon to your hand. You discard any evolution sources and you make one of your Digimon active. Oh, yeah, that's kind of awesome. Now, when it comes out as a security card, you activate the main effect. That could actually be terrifying. Because if you return, you, you have to return a card to your hand. It doesn't say you may, it says return one. According to the translation we've got, but the translation team have been pretty on it so far. So we end up in this really weird situation where as it comes, if it comes out as a security card, it could actually do you more harm than good. But... It could also be phenomenal. You know, it's an example I've given over and over and over again. But Gabumon, the one that when you play it, you get to draw a card. You are playing that to play it from your hand and get yourself a card advantage. Now imagine you get to pick it up so you can then play it again in the future drawing another card. And make one of your Digimon active. And I don't need to tell you how good making your Digimon active is. We've talked about this over and over again. This is one of the flat out most powerful things you can do in the game. 
If you make yourself active, you get to attack again. Any attacking skills you have get to be used again. And you can kind of go a little bit nuts. And then, of course, you know, in Ultimate Power, we've got those Digimon that want to be made active. Like Old Force Vigimon, for instance. When you become active during your main phase, you gain a memory. So now, not only can you pick up your Gabumon and make your Old Force Vigimon active, and that's a very nice card to make active, but you also give yourself an extra memory. Well, gee whiz, ladies and gentlemen... That actually sounds pretty gosh darn good. It is quite an expensive card at a 5 cost. But I think it does enough to warrant it. I wasn't a huge fan of Arctic Blizzard. But I am a huge fan of the Ray of Victory. Is this the kind of card that can win you the game? Like literally, if you've gotten rid of all of your opponent's security cards, you need to attack once in order to win the game. But you might not be able to attack. You might have no attacks left. Oh, look. The Ray of Victory. Wins you the game there and then. Lets you attack. Or makes you make a Pokemon active. Which then lets you attack. Which directly leads to victory. I cannot be the only one that thinks that an option card that makes you active is pretty good. There will be times you do not want to pick up one of your Digimon. And I do like the fact that it cannot force you to pick up a level 6 or 7 Digimon. But honestly, we've got some really nice when you play them skills. So, yeah, just reuse one of those. I'm a fan, ladies and gentlemen, but I'd like to know what you think. So let me know in the comment section, would you go nuts? Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wassy, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv. Slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all that good stuff, head on over to patreon.com slash PTCG Radio, where you can do exactly that. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching Wassy Plays.